Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, this is our first wines of the month virtual tasting. We've done a couple with a couple of winemakers. We've done, excuse me, not winemakers, a couple of wine reps. Um, we've done some neat sherry cocktails. We've done some Italian stuff. Um, we've done some French stuff. So now what we decided we wanted to do was uh, highlight the wines that Shelly and I pick, uh, white and a red typically every month that sit over here next to me on the barrel for 30, 31 days um, that we feel like everybody needs to become familiar with. Um, we choose these wines for a reason. Uh, they're typically between 20 and 30 bucks. There's nothing really ever outrageous on the barrel, um, but it's always something that we'd like to highlight because it's something that we've found that either fits the season, fits the clientele, or is something that we just thought was, hey, this is some wine for the price. Um, so that being said, today we have a Sancerre. Uh, a Sancerre, typically when people just say Sancerre, it's like saying um, another uh, region, but, but instead of it being just a region, it's also known typically uh, as a type of wine. In this case, it's Sauvignon Blanc. Um, Sancerre is in the Loire Valley in France. Um, and it is known as the, the epitome of the place to go for delicious Sauvignon Blanc. So uh, we've got one of those. We also have a Red Hills Lake County cab that we're gonna try at the end. I'm gonna talk about both areas, uh, what they're known for, what they're good for. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the winemakers themselves. Um, and then obviously we're gonna try the wines the whole time. So you're welcome. You can see I have my glass of Sancerre ready to go if anybody else has theirs at home and they want theirs ready to go, now's your chance. Um, we're getting started. So as you can see on your screen, um, we've got on the left, the Sancerre tradition by Hubert Brochard, um, and then on the right, the Obsidian Ridge. Um, that's actually three different winemakers for Obsidian, but we'll talk about those guys a little bit later. Um, so, let's see here. Sancerre, or Sanware. So you'll see here, these are the major wine regions of France. Um, you recognize Paris, Paris, excuse me, in the top center of the country of France. Um, and then you'll see the red arrow pointing down. That is pointed almost directly down the Loire River um, in the upper Loire, what is known as the upper Loire, because the river goes up and comes back down. Um, and so in that specific subregion, um, we're in the far east in the upper Loire Valley. And Sancerre is known for two grapes, Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir. A lot of people don't know that the second most grown grape in Sancerre is Pinot Noir. And the majority of the Pinot that's used is used for red and both rosé. They make a, a fair amount of rosé. It's probably a one to three rosé to red wine ratio for the Pinot Noir that's grown, and then it's probably a one to two ratio Pinot Noir to Sauvignon Blanc that's grown in Sancerre specifically. Um, Sauvignon Blanc just tends to do better, and Pinot Noir was there first, and so it's more like the traditionalists not wanting to leave the region. Um, there, there are people that make some good rosés from Pinot Noir out of Sancerre, and then there are some actually really interesting Pinot Noirs, but they just can't compete with Burgundy. And that's really what it comes down to. So it's known for Sauvignon Blanc, just keep that in mind. So we'll keep moving along. Sancerre has three main soil types. There's limestone, a clay limestone mix, and then the Silex, which is flint, which makes a big difference based on where you are in the region. You'll see in a minute, there's a big map showing specifically uh, like breaking down the subregions of Sancerre. We can get to that actually, it'll probably make um, a difference. The area known as Chaminol, um, where um, Hubert Brochard is from, um, is Kimmeridgian marl or I think that clay limestone. So it's literally fossilized soil um on steep slopes um and it's that's the area that's known for having the most ageable of the three different soil types in the Sancerre region um 
not a lot of times you'll see sun's hairs go many more than two to three to four years ageability. Um, but in Chabonol specifically, you can have some stuff that goes decades. Um, and so that's notable. And so you'll see here wine regions of the Loire Valley. We're in the dead center of, of France. Um, and so the Loire makes its way from uh, west to east. And so we're at the furthest eastern point. And this is kind of a breakdown of what the upper Loire suburb looks like. Um, from left to right, you have Reli, Quincy, Minitou, Salon, Sancerre. Um, and then on the other side of the Loire, um, it's Pouy Fou, or Pouy Fume is what's grown there. That's the grape, but it's Pouy Sous Loire. Um, and that they're known for drier versions of Sauvignon Blanc compared to Sancerre. And so here's, here's the super breakdown, the super, I guess, intense version of a map. Um, if you actually can see it, um, you can see La Col de Bougeau right underneath the Chabonol uh, kind of region area just to the west of Sancerre. That is um, where Hubert Brochard is based. They pay Sancerre called La Col de Bougeau. We sell it here at the store. It's one of those Sancerres that is ageable. Um, it's probably one of the most complicated Sauvignon Blancs you'll ever taste. This is more of an estate line that they make. So they source grapes from different little plots with different soil types to try to give you an idea of what a generic Sancerre is like. This is like an entry level Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, and so we'll get to that here. With the Hubert Burchard tradition, this is the white wine that you have at home. It's a classic representation of Sancerre from vineyards across the region of Sancerre. So instead of just Chavignol, where their winery is based out of, we're moving along, we're going to some of that Silex soil and also just regular clay soil. So you'll get different, different uh, soil types that kind of break down the, the body of what is, what is Sancerre, what it's known for. 40% um, of vines in limestone, 30 in Silex and 30 in clay. And so, the limestone gives it strength, emboldens it, the flint adds minerality, and the clay adds the aromatics. You can notice all of this on your own. I'll be happy to unmute everybody if anybody is at home drinking. Uh, I get citrus, elderflower, and herbs. There's a little bit on the backside, kind of a floral character. Maybe it's probably from the majority of it being in limestone. Um, let's see here. I'll unmute everybody if uh, you guys would like to participate. One comment from the crowd. So I, I get that classic. Um, I get the classic. Uh, new mown hay coming out of this wine. Okay. Uh, um, that's that. That's, herbaceous that's what you should be tasting. Maybe, maybe it's my ears aren't, my earbuds aren't unmuted or something. Anyway, no biggie. Um, what you should notice is what you see on the screen: citrus, elderflower, herbs. It's a medium weight. It's not a complicated version of Sancerre. Like I said, they're trying to make a a version of Sancerre that's an entry level wine easy for somebody to understand, and, and a typical wine from the region. So it's medium weight. Um, there's firm acidity. You can taste the flint limestone, and then you get um, that mineral character at the end and a little bit of florality. Um, but nothing like you'd see like from the Rhone Valley or anything like that. Um, it's an easy wine. Um, goes great with any kind of salad um, and cuts high acid stuff well, like tomatoes, vinaigrettes. Um, does a great job. Pairs well with anything like that. You could almost like a chevre cheese or something would go well with this too. Um, it's really up to you guys. So we'll move on to obsidian. I'll put this away. Missed out. I've already poured mine. 
Um, Obsidian Ridge, uh, it's located in the Red Hills Lake County AVA. They're actually a brand new American viticultural area. Uh, it cuts Lake County kind of in half on the southern side. You'll see that in a second. Um, we're in the supreme north of all the AVAs in California. So you're above Napa County, you're above San Francisco Bay. And if you look really closely again at another really detailed map, there's actually Obsidian Ridge Vineyard in a little purple dot next to it. So they're underneath Clear Lake, which is what Lake County is named for. And there's a volcano that erupted many moons ago. Um, you'll see there it's, uh, the vineyard is proud of being planted at 2640. Uh, feet basin in the Mayacamas range in the north of the Napa Valley, north of Napa Valley, excuse me. Um, I've already told you about this. The volcanic soils make it for a remarkable mountain appellation. Konokti is the name of the volcano that erupted 11,000 years ago. Even though can, they consider it to be active, it's, it's these volcanic slopes in the northern Mayacamas that make for great wine growing and just the real estate there is crazy, especially being right underneath the lake itself. So we'll move on to the cab. It's broken down into 96% Cabernet Sauvignon, 2% Petit Verdot, 2% Malbec. Um, you can call it a cab as soon as you hit 75%. And so they choose two here. They don't call it a blend just because it's got two little baby percentages of two other grapes in there. Um, 18 months in 45% new, medium toast plus, and heavy toast Kadar barrels. This is Hungarian oak, and actually two out of the three owners uh, of Obsidian Ridge worked for, founded, um, it's a little blurry. They own the Cooperage manufacturing, I guess, uh, area in Hungary. Uh, this is Tokaj. It's where they are known for making Hungarian barrels specifically meant for aging wine. Uh, and they use it well. So on the nose, we get coffee nibs, blueberries, and black pepper. Um, this is a pretty, I would say, dark colored robe. Uh, probably purple violet, maybe. Not not anywhere near a bricking color by any means. This is a very young wine. I opened this wine maybe two hours ago for good reason. Uh, 2017, being that it's 2020 and we're halfway through the year, 2017 is a very young one. So it needs a little bit of time. It can go for a long time uh, on the shelf. Flavors of dark chocolate, coffee, and fresh blackberry. You guys can probably, if you're at home trying, uh, taste all of these. Beautiful, easily ageable red that can sell her for eight to 12 years. We gave a good friend of mine 10 bottles of this a few years ago for her engagement party, and the idea was. Okay, you'll take the 2013 Obsidian Ridge, and for every year that you have an anniversary, you can open one at each anniversary year. And so we had all the friends come by and write stuff on each one of the bottles. This is a wine that can go without a problem for, and it's probably due to the majority of that Hungarian oak. It, it ages wine very well. Pairs well with red meats or anything that can be thrown on the grill. It's a really easy drinking, especially after it opens up a little bit. It's a little tight right out of the bottle. You can notice it's, I don't want to say infanticide, but it's a baby. It's a little baby and it needs to be put down for a little while. So does anybody have any questions? I can hear some of you, believe it or not. So well. It round out, like will it develop more of the coffee or the pepper or what, what yes, comes it will. out it's, more it's as, probably, as it ages? It's probably what we would say really tight right now. 
Um, the, the wine itself being 2017, they keep it in barrel for a little while, but it's, it's 18 months and then it's in the bottle and they don't leave it in for any time in the cellar or anything. So this is fresh to the market, 2017 bleeding edge. I decanted this at four o'clock and it's still a little bit on the tight side. So it's, it's a wine that is either meant to be, um, decanted before you eat or if you know ahead of time that you like young wine then that's something that's meant for you otherwise it's meant to be laid down for at least a few years if not 